Thank you. Keep pulling, keep pulling, keep pulling. The transformation that has happened in UPS, I used to say, has never happened in any university. Those who came before him and those who came after UPS, what has been achieved by Dr. Penny Kulebu and the put together should also be celebrated more than the celebration that we are celebrating. At, at the stake at the moment in this country, that Ghana is at the crossroads. We want people, or we should elect people who would be, be bring transformation, transformative leadership. Not people who, who will come and get our vote because they just want our vote. Not voting for sentimental reasons. But we live within reality. We don't live within sentiments. We don't live within cliches. We live in the practical aspect of day-to-day -day transformation in people's lives. Free SHS has transformed the life. If nothing, for the girl child. Before we started free SHS, for every hundred students, boys that went to school, only 65. And every professor of technical and gynecology, interestingly, Professor Martin, who said to me, that he doesn't believe in family planning. To me, I was taken aback. A professor of objectives, one of the premier obstetrician gynecologists in this country. Prof, why don't you believe in? And he said, Napo, just put the girl child through education and you'll solve the issue of today. And it's true. The running mate to the MPP presidential candidates, former Minister of Education former Minister of Energy, Honorable Matthew Opoku Pempe, to give his briefing. Vice-Chancellor, the Registrar, Legi, invited guests, students, friends from the media, ladies and gentlemen. Second controversy. I personally have liked this to have been done when we win the 2020 for general presidential election. Because for, for, for detractors, you will never appreciate what the chair and the vice chancellor have said. Good morning. For me, it is a profound sense of humility that I stand before you today on the occasion of naming Hostel B here at the University, the program my University of Professional Studies in my honor. This gesture. It's not only a recognition of my modest contribution to education in Ghana, but also a proof of the transmutative power of education in shaping 
and impacting life. Allow me to begin by expressing my heartfelt appreciation to the University Council, the management, the entire UPSA community for this extraordinary recognition. You have given me a permanent place etched in the heart of this great institution. My personal thanks to Senior Oku and the Chairman of the Council, one of the most respected people I've met in my party. This honor is even more meaningful as it takes me back to July 2021, when this same institution conferred upon me the honorary doctorate of humane letters in recognition of my modest contribution to education in Ghana. That day, the recognition I said was a celebration of the collective hard work to transform Ghana's education sector. I have personally believed that education must serve as a great equalizer, bridging the gaps of inequality and providing opportunities for all, irrespective of one's background. This belief guided my work during my tenure, where that together with my team we pursued groundbreaking and far-reaching initiatives. If we celebrate, if we today, if we celebrate the educational experience of NPP, educational excellence of NPP, what NPP has done in the last eight years to education, is thanks to the people who devoted their time and effort in writing the 2016 NPP manifesto. It was a manifesto that I'll call an educational bible. And I felt that being given that job meant that one, it would teach me the humility in leadership that I could never have achieved anything without being very, very, very humble and open-handed, open-minded to those upon whose neck I still become what I am today. People taught the celebration of free senior high school, but I can assure you it was the easiest of them all. The total educational transformation that we did Coming up with the first tertiary education policy, the renewal of technical and vocational education and training in Ghana, the renewal of teacher education in Ghana, the transformation of our schools, infrastructure, curricula, and everything that was left. In fact, I left the Ministry of Education with scars that will remain for me forever. Even in the time of COVID, when everybody was at home, we work 24-7 in the Ministry of Education to ensure that we could even put our curricula and zero rate it on all the net mobile networks in the country for education to continue. So the students for which we talk celebrated with us by coming up with the best SSS exams ever in the history of this That to me was the second humbling moment that have not taught. After the detractors had had their say, and oh my God, they didn't have their say. I could read about myself in the papers and I couldn't believe that I was who I was reading about. But I saw that out of jewelry, gold must pass through fire. And I found it really resting that we have paid our views. Leadership, leadership leadership is everything. If today we are celebrating UPSA, it is just because we had a transformative leaders, the board chairman, Dr. Kunebi, and the vice chancellor, my, 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 my senior, Oko. We got to the ministry with only one thing to say, and to support every institution from kindergarten to university that would show leadership. I'm not sure in the four years or eight years that Oko has been here that we've met, I've asked a place for anybody in UPSC, for anybody. That is not the purpose of which we should have leaders. Leaders should really learn the act of service. 
And always think from day one when you are given the opportunity. What will they say about him and have left What will people say about Dr. Ogini and my own senior Oku when they've left? The transformation that has happened in UPSA, I used to say it has never happened in any university, those who came before him and those who came after UPSA. What has been achieved by Dr. Ogini Kulebi and Oku together should also be celebrated more than the celebration that they are celebrating. Everywhere I pass, I even wanted to become an honorary member of the faculty so that I can come and learn how to play tennis here. Every day, almost every day, I pass in front of UPSA to get to where I want to go to. And I just love the road because I see transformation right in front of my eyes. Not only curriculum, also infrastructure. Not only curriculum and infrastructure, but also leadership and example that we are finding. And I hope that the incoming vice chancellor, another good friend of mine. I know their shoes are big, but you should also be able to leave a lasting legacy when you have left this. Don't think that you will be leaving your, when you are about leaving is when you have to do your legacy. You have to write your legacy script the one that you get into office. Because that is what you'll be remembered for. You'll not be remembered for how many students you helped come to UPSA. You will not be remembered for the politics of USA, the lectureship, professorship politics, the politics of the council in approving professorship. That's what you remember for. You remember when you leave, what did he also add to you? Yes. That, I think, is what is at, at, at the stake at the moment in this country. That Ghana is at the crossroads. We want people, or we should elect people who would bring transformative leadership. Not people who will come and get our vote because they just want our vote. Not voting for sentimental reasons. But we live within reality. We don't live within sentiments. We don't live within cliches. We live in the practical aspect of day-to-day -day transformation in people's lives. People forget that nearly 100,000 students every year couldn't go to school because our end certificate was BEC. And they had passed and couldn't go to secondary school. And when you finish BEC, the certificate doesn't qualify you to apply for any job in the country. And these 100,000 students, lives, human beings, were left out of our accounting system in this country. Free SHS has transformed their life. If nothing for the girl child. Before we started Free SHS, for every hundred students, boys that went to school, only 65. And every year, check the papers, from 2012 to 2016, and even before that, the issue of teenage pregnancy was so rife and rampant in the country. Every day, teenage pregnancy. Every day, we could quantify the number of teenagers who have gotten pregnant. Why would they get pregnant when there is no future for them? And now, for every 100 boys, there are 107 girls. Two things that drove me passionately in education was to help the young child and to help the poor. To help the girl child and to help the poor. To help the girl child and to help the poor. And I'm very, very happy when I go to nursing training institutions and teacher training institutions. That itself has been transformed to education, a degree awarded institution, all my teacher training institutions. And I find the performance of women and ladies there, I ask myself, where would they have been? In other people's bedrooms, being the only thing God had made them, carriers of babies, no way. Ghana will never see a transformation if we don't invest in the girl child. And it is my professor of obstetric and gynecology, interestingly, Professor Martin, who said to me that he doesn't believe in family planning. To me, I was taken aback. Professor of Objectives, one of the premier obstetrics and gynecologists in this country. Prof, why don't you believe in? And he said, Napo, just put a girl child through education and you'll solve the issue of today's And it's true. 
By the time the girl child finishes tertiary education, she may be 19 or 20, 20 years. And when they enter the university, they don't have children left, right, and center. Their lives are already planned. Their lives are on a trajectory to a better future and prosperity for all of us. That. I always say, I can't talk about Dr. Hini Kudadu and talk about Oko Senior. Remember, for the very finish that institution, everybody is a senior, right? So we are all seniors. I can't talk about I'm talking about UPS and the leadership they brought just across the road when I became the minister. There were universities that are taking millions of dollars to do similar infrastructure. And as we speak, the Ministry of Finance is paying for that debt. Similar universities. They are taking millions in United States dollars to build the kind of infrastructure UPSA is inaugurating. And today, none of it was built and Ghana government is still paying the debt. That is the difference. So I was very, very proud and I will still remain proud as a minister, former minister, hopefully former, former minister. Education, I won't have to go there again. But to say, that the best university management I ever came across in four years, and I can say, even today, is Dr. Hini Kulebi teaming up with the senior I'm sure we are not in it for ourselves. Like I said, I hardly even spoke to him. Hardly. Dr. Hini Kulebi, we not call him a so, thank you for the service you have rendered to UPSA and education in general. By naming this hostel after me, you inspire me to do even more for education. Hopefully, even more for more than education. And to continuously support institutions like ours, endorse in their quest for academic and infrastructural excellence. Thankfully, ladies and gentlemen, I will be happy, also happy to serve the man who has given the clearest indications of resolve to ensure that solid foundations laid by the Nabudan Peku Fadu's administration in the education sector is built upon. That man is His Excellency Alaji Dr. Mahmoud Rami. I dare say that, I dare say that it is only under his competent watch that the gains we've chopped, the foundations we've laid, can be brought to fruition. We must protect educational excellence in Ghana. We must protect leadership excellence in Ghana. It shouldn't be for everybody. It should be for those who are prepared and prepared right to offer exemplary leadership. Thank you. name on the building kindly come closer to me as we cut the ribbon kindly i invite the honorable uh, matiboku pempe council chairman the vice chancellor the registrar to come and cut the ribbon
Thank you. Keep pulling, keep pulling, keep pulling. Keep pulling. This letter at home. If they have followed it up, in less than two weeks, we got the approval for this project. So, it will be, we'll be in good, ungrateful if we fail to appreciate what it do for us to get this project done. This approval was done by council very early in the year. We do not have time to do this till now. I pleaded with him and said, as for this one, no matter how busy you are, I see you on television all over, but find five minutes for you, PSA. And we promise you that it will be very short. And I think we are under the expectation that we are making very short so that we can release you on the campaign trail again. But I stand on behalf of management and as chairman said, UPSA is great to me. That we did was only a small part. The storms we had, I personally owe you a lot of gratitude because apart from your wise counsel and effort, probably I will not be standing here. Thank you so much for the support and thank you for what you did for me. Now I have had a chance to personally pay my dues to you to say I am personally grateful. The UPSA is grateful. And you can see the students behind us. We should be grateful that they are there because you made the effort to have this building. So all behalf of my students too, we say thank you so much and we appreciate you and wish you so well. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. BC. We can't thank you enough, honorable. So the reason we are here. 